Now let's take a look at the upcoming bee shortage that's going to be happening in 2023 and 2024. This is a big one, folks, and I don't know anyone that has covered this topic, and this is the reason why I wanted to talk about it on tonight's show. Let's take a look at Florida. Typically, this is a, a go-to place for uh, migratory beekeepers and backyard beekeepers uh, on that there. So during September through the winter months, migratory beekeepers are right in the middle of the heart of the state of Florida. Now, when we look at Florida, Florida is the fourth largest honey producing state uh, in the nation. And when we look at Florida in particularly, there's 5,000 beekeepers managing roughly 700,000 colonies. And that's coming from the Florida Department of Agriculture and the University of Florida. Now, when we look at what happened after Ian, uh, the initial number was 300,000 from the Florida Department of Agriculture, but that has been moved up just recently to 380,000 colonies lost. So when we're looking at that 380,000 hives that are lost, that does not include the migratory beekeepers that go into the state of Florida in August and September and over winter through to January, say. So that could easily be 100,000 hives that are lost there. So the total lost hives from Hurricane Ian is roughly 480,000. And that would be roughly 20% of, of a bee loss for the complete nation on that level. So huge losses. There is no way that the bee community can boost enough in any given season to replace those. So that's a huge issue. I don't know how that is going to be overcome except by time. And time is, is an issue that we're also going to have to be looking at for pollination purposes. So let's take a look at, at California now. California is a whole different issue, but it involves flooding from the large precipitation that the, the state has had over the last three to four weeks. And our calculation right now, which is not very scientific, but we would forecast that there's roughly 100,000 hives that have been lost due to lowlands that have been flooded. You add that together with Florida, now you have 580,000 hives that have been flooded or windblown uh, that will not survive coming into the new season. Now, with that said, let's move on to Canada. Uh, Canada has also suffered roughly um, from coast to coast, and, and that coast to coast loss is anywhere between 60 and 75% of their hives uh, are gone. And this is thought to be Varroa and the diseases that they carry that has really hurt the Canadian beekeepers there. Now, we must be reminded that the, the country of Canada does not allow imports of honeybees from the United States. And the Canadian beekeepers are looking at changing some of those laws but time is, is really ticking on this. And for them to have those bees, they're going to need those right into the early part of May coming into the country. And we all know how long legislation takes, especially when it's importation issues and uh, part of agriculture. A lot of fences need to be taken down before honeybees can be brought in. And this has really put the beekeepers in, in Canada uh, in a real quandary because there's no place to go except re, um, reinvesting in their operations and splitting and splitting and splitting. And as we all know, those splits take time to grow out and you're not going to get that your first year or second year in the quantities that these beekeepers, commercial beekeepers and backyard beekeepers need in Canada. So with, with that said, I, I just don't see um, our, our, our bread baskets, both in, in Canada and the U.S., receiving the proper pollination that they need for their crops. 
Now, let's take a look at the, the migratory beekeepers and try to bring this all into uh, play here. Now, they load up in, uh, typically in southern Texas. And let's go to the next slide there. They'll, they'll be loading up in southern Texas and also from Florida and either going to California. And a majority of those migratory guys are going to California for the almonds because of the, the price paid uh, per, per um, colony is anywhere from 200 to $220 a month for the pollination of the almonds. So there's a lot of traffic that is normally going out there, but with, with, with the reduced um, colonies, I don't see pollination of, of, the, um, of the almond groves being sufficient for this year. And for those that don't know, uh, the United States has 80% of the almond crops that, we're, that we put both domestically and internationally exporting. And almonds need extra pollination for them to, to harvest the, the nuts that they're supposed to on that there. So I see personally uh, a reduced uh, part of the almonds and just talking about the almonds is because of water rationing in California, a lot of these um, growers have decided just to opt out than to pay uh, the extravagant price for water out there. And they're just pulling their trees out of the ground and, and uh, trying to reduce the water that is needed to keep their orchards going. So we have crops also. Uh, because once the migratory guys leave the fields of the almond trees, they're heading back south to Texas and to Florida to begin the pollination of melons and, and the fruit trees uh, there and working themselves northward. So I see a pollination problem for not only this year, but next year. And just as a reminder, you know, pollination, uh, takes anywhere from 5% to 30% of what we eat on our table every day needs to have that pollination. So um, I see higher food prices coming in the, in the months uh, to come. And of course, we're, we're all suffering from high grocery bills, uh, but I only see it going higher on that there. Uh, let's go to the next slide. And then on top of everything else, we had two to three weeks of bitter coldness uh, going from December into January. And I would predict that some of the Southern beekeepers have lost hives because they have screen bottom boards and it just did not keep the R factor right for the, the warmth retention within the hive. So it, it's a sad story is the bees have taken a hard hit uh, over the last three and a half months, uh, beginning in Florida and then to California and then the coldness uh, here in December and January. So let, let's, let's see what we can do to get out of this, but I don't see any quick answers for the bee loss that, that has happened. 